Now let's talk about the CPU, the brain of your system. Let's start by talking about the speed of the CPU, which is measured in megahertz or gigahertz, and that number indicates how much it will be able to do within a set time span. CPUs these days also have multiple cores. The number of cores indicates how much it can do at the same time, in other words, multitasking. So if you plan on doing heavy duty tasks such as streamings, recordings, editing, more cores will end up helping you. Another word you'll see associated to some CPUs is hyperthreading. Hyperthreading is a smart scheduling of workloads so that the CPU never has any downtime. Think of yourself as emptying a dishwasher full of plates. Hyperthreading is like emptying the dishwasher with multiple hands. So you have one hand putting the plate in the cabinet while the other hand retrieves another plate and gets it ready to be put in the cabinet. However, as you can imagine, this only improves efficiency if you actually have multiple plates. If you only have one plate in the dishwasher, then what's the point of having multiple hands? To put this back into the context of your PC and your CPU, you're gonna need multiple processes for hyperthreading to really help. Another important stat to look at is your CPU cache, which is the memory within the CPU that is faster than the RAM itself. The idea is that the CPU cache memory takes a small piece from the RAM, and based on that small piece of data, the CPU will be able to guess what's coming next, leading to better performance. There's also a physical element of the CPU you need to take into account. The most common difference can be seen between AMD CPUs and Intel CPUs. On AMD CPUs, if you flip them over, you'll see that the pins are actually located on the CPU. Whereas on Intel's, the CPU itself is flat on the underside, and the pins are located on the motherboard. These pins, wherever they're placed, are absolutely crucial for a working PC. Bent or damaged pins can cause fatal damage to your CPU or your motherboard. Your CPU will also need a cooler, which we'll go into a little bit later. When installing the CPU, you're going to need to locate the socket that we covered before in the motherboard section. There's usually a lever that will hold down the socket, so make sure you push the lever up and that will open up the socket. Make sure you line up the cutouts on the CPU as well as the motherboard so that it's mounted in the correct orientation. Once everything's lined up, the CPU itself should fall in on its own weight. There is a bit of variation between motherboards, so it's always best to refer to the manual that came with your motherboard, but generally there will be a hinge that you fold down and once that's set and locked in place, your CPU should be secured. It may feel like you're applying a bit too much pressure, but once the CPU is in the correct position, you'll need to apply a little bit of force to make sure that it's fully secured in place. So when you're buying a CPU, what are the things that you should consider? Firstly, and it holds true to every component, you should look at reviews to see how the CPU will perform in a real world scenario. And because it's so important, we'll mention again, make sure that the CPU is compatible with your motherboard in terms of socket type. Next, you'll wanna take into account the number of cores if you think multitasking is important for you. Similarly, as we described above, hyperthreading can help with multitasking, so see if the CPU itself supports hyperthreading and if that's something you're interested in. The speed of the CPU in terms of gigahertz. You can also consider the cache memory size, but generally it won't have a huge impact on gaming performances. Power consumption is also something to consider if you don't want to rack up a huge power bill, but also so you can make sure that you pick the correct power supply for your needs. If you're interested in overclocking, make sure that the CPU itself supports overclocking. And the final thing you should consider when looking at CPUs is security elements. There have recently been some critical security issues, and although that most of them have been patched and they're safe to use again, it's always something that you should consider when purchasing a CPU. 